To pull off their final 9-11, Israel and the CIA plan to destroy the Statue of Liberty, possibly using a mini nuclear weapon on April 8th, 2024, or later that week. Need another 9-11 for who guys to- Israel and the CIA are likely planning to also demolish the Washington Monument, the Liberty Bell, or other famous American landmarks, potentially using low-yield nuclear weapons. Even the Capitol Building and White House are potential targets. Multiple Israelis and Zionist Jews have said the U.S. and young Americans need another 9-11. Globally, Israel's Mossad will likely also target the Palace of Westminster, Big Ben, the Eiffel Tower, and similar landmarks across Europe. This will be timed around the solar eclipse and the Zionist Jewish sacrificing of red heifer cows in Israel in preparation to demolish the Islamic Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock holy sites in Jerusalem. It's not about the destruction of Islamic holy sites. It's about preserving this place and being guardians over the house of God for all people. House of God for all people. Oh, it's going to go 100%, but I believe it's going it, to go. It's 100%, yeah. The whole thing is going to go. We have to build a temple. One of several reasons Israel plans to destroy the U.S. and European landmarks the week of April 8th is to provide a false pretext to blame Iran, who Israel has wanted to go to war with for many years. If the United States goes to war with Iran, it will not be because Tehran actually threatens America. It will be because Israel and its powerful lobby in the U.S. have succeeded in creating an essentially false casus belli to mandate such action. Mainstream media, which is 100% controlled by Israel and the CIA, is currently flooded with warnings that Iran is about to attack the U.S. and Israel. The United States is preparing for a significant Iranian attack on U.S. or Israeli assets in the region as soon as next week. That, according to a U.S. official. The United States is preparing for a significant attack from Iran, targeting U.S. or Israeli assets in the Middle East. How do we know Israel will use small nuclear weapons for these operations? Because the Mossad apparently used a modified nuclear weapon designed to leave little to no radiation in a massive bombing in Beirut in August 2020. Furthermore, I have come across information that it is known within certain intelligence circles that Israel has already threatened and communicated to its Western puppet politicians that it has placed its illegal nuclear weapons underneath Western capitals and is willing to use them. Up until now, this was a form of nuclear blackmail. Israeli soldier and social media propagandist Hanania Naftali posted on March 18th, 2024 on X that a so-called Lebanese Hezbollah terrorist was captured at the Texas border and allegedly confessed that he was planning to set off a bomb in New York. What Hananya Naftali is telling you in coded language is that when a bomb goes off in New York, soon Israel and its U.S. puppet politicians will blame Hezbollah or Iran. Another possible scapegoat for the planned Israeli and CIA terror attacks will be ISIS, which is an Israeli CIA creation. ISIS stands for Israeli Secret Intelligence Service, the rough translation of the word Mossad. What shall we call it in English? You can translate the Hebrew words, as I said, Mossad is Institute, but when they write a letter to their friends in the CIA or the British intelligence, what do they call themselves? And he came up with uh, the Israeli Secret Intelligence Service. I mean, if it were to have initials, it would be ISIS. The Zionist-controlled Department of Homeland Insecurity and FBI have issued warnings that Israel's ISIS puppets will strike in the U.S. this week. Tonight, FBI and Homeland Security officials are warning U.S. law enforcement about the potential for terror inspired by that deadly ISIS attack in Moscow targeting a concert hall. Here in 2018, we have several news articles about ISIS allegedly planning to blow up the Statue of Liberty. This is nearly identical to the original 9-11 script, in which Israel and its Zionist assets lied and claimed Saddam Hussein was involved in 9-11 and had non-existent weapons of mass destruction. There is no question whatsoever that Saddam is seeking and is working 
and is advancing towards the development of nuclear weapons. No question whatsoever. Saddam Hussein has gone to elaborate lengths, spent enormous sums, taken great risks to build and keep weapons of mass destruction. As the world knows, no weapons of mass destruction were ever found. When General Wesley Clark disclosed the plan to take out seven countries in five years immediately after 9-11, Iran was the last on that list. Israel's founding prime minister, David Ben-Gurion, outlined plans for a one-world Jewish Zionist government, a new Zionist world order, headquartered in Jerusalem in 1962 in Look magazine. This plan lines up with the Protocols of the Elders of Zion and its roadmap for the creation of a Jewish Zionist one-world government. One of the protocols states, You may say that the Goyim, the non-Jews, will rise up against us, guns in hand, if they guess what is going on before the time comes for our complete domination. But in the West, we have a maneuver against this of such appalling terror that would cause even the very hardest of hearts to convulse. The undergrounds, those subterranean corridors which lie beneath the capitals, before the time comes, those capitals will be blown into the air with all their organizations and archives. This idea of taking out the key underground infrastructure of American and European capitals lines up with Israel's terror operations they plan to start on April 8th, as well as the long-term Zionist Jewish roadmap to unveil absolute despotic rule. I recommend everyone read The Protocols of the Elders of Zion. There are different editions. One of the easiest to understand is The Protocols of Zion in Modern English, found at archive.org. Additional indicators about what's coming. The Netflix film Leave the World Behind featured a nuclear bomb going off in New York. The city of New York put out a curious Be Prepared for a Nuclear Attack public service announcement video less than two years ago. And the film Escape from New York features a destroyed Statue of Liberty. This is all predictive programming, highly reminiscent of Israeli super spy Arnon Milchin's March 2001 show called The Lone Gunman, which showed an autopilot-controlled hijacked airplane attempting to fly into the World Trade Center six months before 9-11. So I have very little sympathy for what has become of that state. It's a, it's a satanic state. And once the terror network has nuclear weapons, it is only a matter of time before those weapons will be used. You cannot prevent a dictator who has used terrorism in the past, who cavorts and supports and encourages terror organizations from using this weapon by giving it to someone, by having them threaten to use it against his enemies, the Vietnam War and the push for U.S. involvement was a result of the Gulf of Tonkin incident. A lie. Here, here. The Iraq War famously is a result of lies. Wars in Somalia are a result of lies. The Second World War and the German invasion of Poland was a result of carefully constructed lies. That is war by media. Let us ask ourselves of the complicit media, which is the majority of the mainstream press, what is the average death count attributed to each journalist? When we understand that wars come about as a result of lies peddled to the British public and the American public and the publics all over Europe and other countries, then who are the war criminals? It is not just leaders, it is not just soldiers, it is journalists. Journalists are war criminals. And why one might think that that should lead us to a state of despair. That the reality that is constructed around us is constructed by liars, is constructed by people who are close to those that they are meant to be policing. 
it should lead us also to an optimistic understanding because if wars can be started by lies, peace can be started by truth. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Christ is king.